Welcome to the Simply Smart Business Show with me, Gemma Went. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the show where I'm talking about going left when everyone else is going right. Also known as doing things differently. Now, I am going to be mentioning the dreaded GDPR as part of this episode, but I'm not going to be actually talking about it because I think we've all heard enough about it. Um, I'm just using it as my example. Because here's the thing, right? We are now sort of past the uh, the big GDPR deadline. And I think all of us have had to deal with the onslaught of emails <laughs> asking us to opt in. Um, and my God, it was boring, wasn't it? Holy crap. Like, I got emails from some people I I hugely, hugely admire um, that were so dull, it really kind of changed my perception of that person. So I think the, the GDPR thing has done some damage to quite a lot of businesses, aside from the obvious damage of people ridiculously deleting email lists which I I just can't get my head around um but also I think it can damage your brand and it can damage people's perception of you and when I was first sort of looking at what I wanted to do with GDPR um initially my first idea was never actually to go out with one of those emails because um that didn't feel right and what what I wanted to do was go out with a couple of new freebies and just as part of that process have the people on my list re-opt in and give me permission where I may not have been compliant in the past um, in terms of sending them other sort of marketing messages and so on. And I wanted to make sure that I am compliant. It's For me, it's an important thing. You know, I live in the UK. I deal mostly with people in the UK and in Europe, although I do deal with people outside of that as well. But also I think because of my history as a digital marketer, um, it felt that I should really pay attention to this, but not just pay attention to this. You know, as a business owner, we should pay attention to this. Um, But also as um, a creative and as someone who likes to do things differently, I just felt like I should try to do things differently with this. So I never really planned to do the big email. And what I wanted to do was um, send out a freebie. And actually, it, it, this was an idea from one of the lovely women, Rachel Flower, in my mastermind. Spoke about, you know, why don't you do it something like a tripwire instead and sell a low-cost product to take people through that process of opting in. Which, you know, I've... I've sold tripwires a lot before but I hadn't thought about it for this and I thought actually that's a really good idea um so I I thought about what I was going to do for GDPR for quite some time I was quite late you know my my efforts with it were kind of like the final week up to the deadline because I was I'm in an R in I was looking at the research I was looking at what people were doing I was getting frankly really annoyed about all of the discussions around it because well, I think I think people took it far too seriously and people were scaremongering. And I think that small business owners spent way too much time and effort uh, and money. So loss of income focusing on this thing when actually they didn't need to. Um, so long as they put, put um, actions in place to be compliant, they didn't need to do all of the things they were doing. So I was sort of getting very frustrated by it and I was looking at what people were doing. Um, and I just thought, no, do you know what? I'm going to do something really, really different because A, people are hating their inboxes right now. They're getting all of these GDPR emails. They're talking about how much they hate them online. And so I made a decision then like, no, I'm definitely not sending the email asking them to opt in because it just wasn't my jam. Like I'm not going to follow the herd it's just not what I want to do so then I thought about what I could do differently and and when all of that is happening and people are getting really frustrated what could I do that's the opposite of that that would have the opposite effect 
of that, that when they see and hopefully read my email, they're actually feeling good and positive about it. And we'll go through their process of um, whatever I'm asking them to do to opt in. Um, so I kind of took my original idea of sending out a freebie, Rachel's idea of sending out a, a tripwire, um, and then kind of really went for it and decided <laughs> decided to um, do a sale, a one pound sale. So for four days, um, of that week that led up to it, I put four of my things on sale for one pound, which is a massive saving. Um, and I spoke about this to my mastermind that I'm in and I, I, I explained what I was doing and said, you know, this is either a genius idea because it means I'm getting a lot of people opting back in and they're feeling really good about me. And on top of that, they become buyers, which is what we want from our email list. Or it's a really idiotic idea. <laughs> I've really got it wrong. And I'll be honest, even as I was going through it, I didn't know which way it was going to go. Whether it was genius or whether it was idi idiotic. But the most important thing for me was to stand out and do something different. And to make my the people on my list feel good at a time when they're really feeling a bit crap. Because they're getting all of these um, emails. So that's what I did. Um, and I put, and these are really valuable products. These are really, really good products. Not your usual um, tripwire fare. Um, and I put them in. And I was going to, here's the thing, right? Two of those products, I was going to do a, a, a quick flash sale on anyway, because I plan to update them. Um, they haven't been updated for a year, and I like to keep my things nice and fresh and relevant. Um, so the two of those products are due an update and I was going to do a flash sale anyway. So those were fine. Um, and then the other two um, uh, were things that I knew that people would absolutely love. Um, and so I went and did it and I only offered it to my list because it was purely for that exercise to kind of, for me to kind of get those things out there even further. Because I love these products. These are, these are proven um, and, and highly valuable and they work really well. Um, and I wanted to kind of get them out there as much as I possibly could and have more impact, which is kind of one of my core values. And one of my words of the year actually is impact to have deeper and broader impact in the work that I do. So it kind of fit with that as well. I thought, actually, well, you know what? This is like crossing off loads of boxes for me because, you know, I'm, I'm taking people through the GDPR process, the, um, product that I, products that I'm updating, I'm putting, I'm putting them out there. And I'm making this stuff more available. I'm having a bigger impact. So it felt really good. It felt like, you know, this this feels like the right thing to do. This feels like a good thing to do. It's ticking loads of my boxes. I'm just going to go for it. So I did it. And as I said, all the way through, I, I thought, you know what? Maybe I should have just done what everyone else is doing and not do this. But honestly, by the time I got to the end of it, I have had so much kind of positive feedback from people. Like I really believe it truly engaged my list even more. And I'll talk you through the stats in a minute to kind of prove that. But I had so many comments, people um, emailing me back, people saying to me, oh my God, I've had my eye on these products for ages and I couldn't afford it. And now that I can, which, you know, for me as a business owner who wants to have um, more impact, that was amazing. Like, that's what I do it for. Like, that is amazing. Um, and I had people getting really excited about what the, the next day's offer would be. Um, it, it, it felt amazing to have that many people doing it. Um, and I had a lot of people buying. I had a lot of people buying. And in terms of, um, and they didn't even know, you know, I didn't even mention GDPR once. Because I didn't want to, I didn't need to. All I did was make sure that as part of that buying process, I was GDPR compliant and there was an option for them to say, yes, they do want to hear from me for updates on the product, email marketing and, um, uh, and um, offers and all of those kind of things so that they were opted in for anything that I could send their way. Um, and it worked a treat. You know, in terms of the results, I only had 45 people opt out 
And let me give you some numbers, actually. Let me give you some numbers. You know me, I'm very transparent. Before, let me go back another step. Before um, I really started embarking on this, I had a list of about 7,000 people. Um, and I realized, obviously, I knew about GDPR months ago. And I realized before I got to the GDPR stage, I wanted to really clean that list before I then look at what I need to do to make it compliant. Um, and I'll hold my hand up. I hadn't been good at all about cleaning my list. Um, and so I ended up removing about 3,000 people from that list. Um, and I've grad gradually kind of whittled that down um, to really clean it and to improve the um, the open rates um, because they were dreadful. They were absolutely dire. I think my engagement rate went down to like 9%, which was, there was no point in having that list. It just wasn't working. So we did a lot of work to clean it. And I, I hired someone to help me with that. And we, we worked on getting that list engaged before I really started looking at it in terms of GDPR and what I needed to do. So I got my list to about 2,700. Uh, a lot less, but a hell of a lot more engaged and you know open rates shot up conversion rates shot up which which just proves right it's not about the size it's about what you do with it because you know the, the smaller list was already reaping um, much better results than the the bigger one um so i started this with about 2700 on the list um i had 45 people opt out during this um either unsubscribe from the email or say no thanks they don't want to hear from me um and those have all been deleted i don't want to keep anyone on my list that doesn't want to be there so those are all gone um but only 45 which i thought was tremendous considering what was going on around um gdpr um i still have a few that haven't opted in but i'm taking those through those people through the process now um but I, to be honest the, the way that they opted into my list previously, uh, I'm pretty sure most of those are GDPR compliant anyway. So I, I am not worrying about that. But I'm still making sure that that all my um, I's are dotted and my T's are crossed. Uh, in terms of my list, I, and this is the thing that I love the most, I now have a list that's got over 50% of buyers on it, which in terms of when you're kind of engaging with your list and when you want to sell to your list, it's much easier to sell to someone that's already a buyer because they've already crossed that trust threshold. They've already parted with their cash, no matter how much cash that was. It doesn't really matter. This is the whole psychology behind using tripwires. Once they've parted with their cash and they've bought something good from you, obviously it has to be a good experience. It has to be quality. And they have that thing and they love it. They are more likely to buy from you again, which is why we do tripwires. But I now have a list that's got 50% of people that have bought from me. Um, and that was kind of the, the lovely surprise from this, that I've got a list that is very full of buyers, which is amazing. Uh, in terms of my engagement rates, I'm currently seeing 48% engagement on my list, which I've never experienced before. And the whole campaign, the whole um, off one pound offer campaign, just got people a lot more engaged. So... My stats went through the roof. So and in terms of was it genius or was it idiotic, I think it was genius because I'm incredibly happy with those results. I've not lost hardly anyone from my list. Um, and I've got a really lovely engaged list and I'm on my way to being GDPR compliant, which is what I wanted to do. Um, so my point in this is to tell you that story, but also to use that story to show you how important it is to not follow the herd and to look at what everyone else is doing and do something opposite because that's the stuff that makes you stand out that's the stuff that really gets the results and actually that's the stuff that's more fun right I really enjoyed doing that and it didn't take much time or effort at all um and that felt really good and it felt really good that I did something very different when everyone else was doing something um that was exactly the same. Um, so think about that in all that you do. You know, it's so easy to follow the herd. It's so easy to follow what people like me are doing online. But take that as inspiration and actually then use that knowledge and insight to do something really different 
to for your guys because you do get much much better results when you go left while everyone else is going right thank you for listening <laughs>